Welcome back. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, welcome back to Tuesday Muse Day. I'm Kalani, and we're going to do some exciting stuff in today's show, you guys. Um, the gong is resonating. What do you think of this little gong? I'll show it to you later. It's picking up everything. Um, I've got a lot of stuff for you guys today. Uh, some community music to share. We've got news later. We've got reflections of Yanni. We've got a musical game for you. Gimme 5 is back live. So we're going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to finish up this musical interlude, but welcome. Glad you guys are here.
Okay, there we go. We're going back. Uh, we're going to go say hello now, we're going back to the desk. I don't know how I got these headphones on with my hat, but happy holidays, everybody. We'll be right with you. Hang on. Let's switch mics and switch cameras. All right. Are we working okay? Um, let me check my phone because last time we had... I'm, I'm using my phone because Roseanne is hosting. As you guys know, Roseanne Musser, say hello, everybody. Thanks, Roseanne, for being here and doing what you do. See, I've already got messages that I need to see. And uh, we try to use the... Um, The messenger system um, because this is on a delay so you know I don't see your, your guys comments for a few seconds last week we had a an audio mishap <laughs> all right uh, nice to see everybody here Lacey and David's back Daryl um, is that Ahmed 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 welcome Mary Rebecca this is awesome you guys Cornelius is here all right, welcome you guys. Um, I'm excited because I'm introducing a couple new things today in the show, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, but uh, before we get to the new stuff, let's do some of our continuing things. Um, you know, we I'd like to feature a video that that you guys don't see usually uh, on YouTube because they're behind, you know, they're behind the paywall at the Patreon site. But still, I want you to see what we're doing over there. So this is from the musical games. Last week we had a, a video on congas. And I'll try to pick videos from the various courses that we have. But this is one of the musical games and this is super easy. And this one is great if you have any group of people and you wanna just do something fun and super, super easy with um, drums and percussion, but you could do this with body percussion or anything, found sounds. You can literally do this with anything, uh, your voices, uh, in the video, you're going to see that uh, uh, we have some percussion. We're in a, like a drum circle kind of setting. But this is a musical game. Um, and it, I call it Where's Froggy? And this game I learned from actually a music teacher, a friend of mine. And I think she called it uh, Kitty's Hiding. And she used to use a stuffed little kitten. I'm using a frog because that's what we have usually, the wooden frogs. You'll see it in the game. But basically, this is just like a hot and cold kind of thing, you know, where when people get closer to the place where Froggy is hiding. Uh, everybody plays louder, and then as the as the seeker or person looking moves farther away, they um, people play softer. And so you're, you're just using volume to guide the person to where Froggy is hiding. But you'll see all that in a second. Here's a video, I'll see you on the other side. This is called Where's Froggy from the Drum Fun uh, Musical Games for Groups collection. This is my friend, Froggy. He's a green tree frog. He lives up in the mountain that Jim carries around. And he likes to hide. He's sociable, he likes people, but sometimes he likes to hide. And he likes to hide in the room and have people find him. He gets excited, so he really likes it. So what we're gonna do is, one of you is gonna help Froggy hide in the room, and then we're gonna ask for a volunteer to go outside so they don't know where he is. And then when the person comes back in, we're all going to get to help that person, the seeker, find Froggy. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to play our instruments. We're going to do a little roll rumble. And the closer they get to Froggy, the louder we're going to play. And then if they get moving away from Froggy, we're going to play softer. And we're going to guide them to find Froggy. Okay, so first I need somebody to volunteer to go out, and then we'll call you back in when it's time to come back in. All right, so anybody? Okay, great, Sam's gonna go out. He'll just go right outside and wait right outside the doors. And then I need somebody to volunteer to hide Froggy. Okay, great, Jim and Sam's out, so here you go. You can hide him anywhere. Okay, so now everybody saw where he is, and you know what to do, right? So this is the loudest spot, 
and then everything farther away is soft. Okay, so we're going to call Samuel back in, and then we're going to start to play. No talking. Don't look at where Froggy is. Okay? Don't give it away. I'm going to say one, two, three, and then we'll all say, come on in. One, two, three. Come on in! fun is that? Uh, that's a really fun game. As I said, you guys... Oh, I'm getting blocked by my own titles. Um, you can do that anywhere, uh, any with anything. People love that, especially little kids. It's kind of, you know, a kindergarten, first grade kind of thing. But adults like it too. We like it too. So remember, if you're a community music facilitator uh, and you want to do some rhythm games, these are great for camp, summer camp, retreats, even corporate events, you know, people need to relax and have some fun. You can use these games all over. So those are from Drum Fun, Musical Games for Groups. That whole collection, like 20, there's over 20 games, is on the Patreon side at the courses level. So you have to be the courses tier to access that. That's just one of them. There's a bunch more over there, including all the other courses. Okay, you guys, I'm really excited right now because look, here's what's happening. All right, I've got a whole table of stuff. Now, you guys might want to take some notes. You might want to get ready and write a couple things down. So what we're doing is we're doing a new feature, and I have I have some videos on this in the past, but what this is called, I'm so excited, uh, is called Gimme Five. And the idea is that we're going to do this during the live stream, and you guys get a chance to choose five instruments all right, you're gonna choose five instruments that I will then use to do live looping at the end of the show. All right, it's exciting, isn't it? So let me show you what you have to choose from real quick and then just quickly you can make some notes or just write it down right now, make, make some choices, make a list of five instruments and then you're gonna need to post that. And then um, I think because this is the first time we're doing it, I'm just going to have Roseanne choose somebody. <laughs> Gets me out of the hot seat, all right? We're just going to have some fun today. So here's here's your choices of hand percussion. And I want to, now I know you may not know the names of everything. I'm going to go over everything really quick. And if you don't know the name, use another way of communicating. But here we go. Tone block or temple block. Temple block. Let's call it temple block, all right? Wood block. Uh, let's call this the tone block. It's kind of low. All right. That's kind of our wood sounds. Also, we have this, which I'm going to put, let's put, we could put that with the wood sound. This is called the cricket. All right. So those are some wood sounds. Now we've got some bells. We've got cowbell. Everybody knows that. We've got Gankogui, Gankogui. We've got an Agogo, Agogo. I used that in the loop just a second ago. Now, we've got some rattles. We've got small seed, or let's call this medium seed pod. Medium seed pod. High, high, or small seed pods. Rattle. Low. Low seed pods. 
shaker, egg shaker cluster out of a whole nest. Maraca. Kashishi. And I don't know what these are called, but uh, let's call it seed pod shake and wooden, wooden shake, shaky shakeroo. I don't know. Did you guys see the Socceroos the other day? By the way, <laughs> I've been watching soccer. All right, that's, um, now that's just the hand percussion. Now we've got drums. All right, but I, I wanna let you guys know, you can pick one drum, okay? You gotta go easy on me. I'm not gonna live loop all these different drums because it's just too, it's not logistical. But we've got cajon, all right, cajon. We've got bongos, we've got a djembe. Over here, we've got a darbuka or dumbek, and we've got one conga drum <laughs> that I will play for you. Um, we've also got a gong, as you heard earlier, and what else? Oh, we have sleigh bells. That's another choice. Also, this thing, and I forgot the name of it. I know it's a shape. Ah, can't remember. Anyway, if you know the name of this, uh, I know it's named after a shape. I don't know. You probably know. Okay, that's it. All right, so you can choose five from all of those. Think about that. And um, yeah, I'm going to go back to the desk right now. I'll meet you there in a second. All right, now while you guys are doing that, All right, Roseanne is busy, man. <laughs> That's a lot of, she's, you are efficient, Roseanne. Thank you, you got, you're got uh, writing everything down. That's great, so everybody pick, make a list if you want, check it twice, find out who's naughty and nice, and then, um, you know, we'll do one of these every week. So if you are if you don't get picked, it's okay. Maybe you could, you could even vote for somebody else's list. All right, so um, get, get that going, we'll do that later. For right now, I wanna make a, I'm gonna, this is another live feature. I'm so excited about this. So I just had lunch with my buddy, Rich Mangiacaro. Some of you may remember him from uh, a feature that I did on him a while back where I visited him in his studio and he was working on his album and he's, you know, he's, he's repping a few brands. We looked at instruments. We were talking about his music. And then I uh, included his music in, in the Tuesday Muse Day a few weeks ago. Well, I just had lunch with him today and I was, I was like, hey man, what are you doing? If you have anything to share, send it over, and he did. He's been making some short videos. So this is a new feature, and I wanna open this up to any of you, anyone at all. Send us a short video of you doing what you do, of what you love to do, and we'll just post them, you know? I mean, as long as it's appropriate. <laughs> as long as it's appropriate, uh, uh, we're gonna, we're just featuring people from the community, you know? So here is a video from Rich Mangiacaro, uh, and he's been making some stuff for, for the, um, like TikTok, Instagram, you know, and, uh, so it's a, it's a portrait mode. So it's just, you're just going to see it. I'm, I'm going to be here. Let's, let's watch it right now. Awesome. All right. Uh, very cool, man. Thanks, Rich. And richmangicaro.com. Go check it out. And uh, we're back on the Gimme 5 slide, but it's not time for Gimme 5 yet. I realized we skipped a whole, I don't know, the thing skipped ahead. What we're going to do right now, you guys, is uh, another installment, 
of Reflections of Yanni. I did that live. All right. This is just a few pictures just for fun. Um, now, the question is, okay, there's Linda Evans, Yanni's girlfriend at the time. And this is, you know, we're just out having dinner. But don't they both look fantastic? Uh, <laughs> now, I don't know if I could get, I don't think I can get in trouble for this. These are my personal photos. I took it so I can use it, right? Um, but I don't know what is going on with Yanni in his right hand there. But you can fake, you can probably guess. All right, I'm going to move on before I get sued. All right, I, here's something that's pretty cool. Now, I'm, I'm sorry this photo is out of focus, but this is from the very first year, the 91 tour, 1991. And this is, as you can see, it's like a little mock-up of the stage, of the first stage. And there's the band. You see percussion, drums, keyboard. There's uh, In the middle, there, those are supposed to be the uh, two violins and a cello, bass player, uh, oh, maybe it's three violins, sorry, three violins and a cello, and I'm blocking the other keyboard right now. And then there's Yanni and a little piano. But look at this. So look at that. And now look at this. Boom. That's kind of what it is. That's So that became the stage setup for, I think we used this stage for 91 and 92, I think, and then it changed a little bit. Um, but that uh, that's the rehearsal, and we're missing a couple people there. We're missing, I think, two violinists. But uh, you can see me up in the upper right corner, and then Charlie Adams with his massive drum set, Osama Afifi on bass, um, Yanni's there at his at his uh, <laughs> said percussion station, his p keyboard station, his pianos. Uh, so that and this was, I believe, this was not at a concert. I, it might have been though. Uh, I don't think it was, though, because you don't see the other violinists. I think it's just at a rehearsal studio. All right, and then this is a this is just a casual photo at an airport. Here we are uh, getting ready. It's probably at LAX. Here we are getting ready to get on a flight. So um, from the left, Karen Briggs, and then me, and then Charlie Adams. This is back row, of course. Uh, Bradley Joseph, Charlie Bisharat, Osama Afifi, and then front row, Amy Shiatani on the right. Sachi McHenry in the middle, and Julianne French down there. Uh, and that was the first band, the Yanni band. That's the that's the first one. All right. Um, I guess it's that time, you guys. It's time for Give Me Five already. I feel like time is flying. It is kind of flying by, but we need time for this because I have to go, you know, get the instruments and make music and stuff. So let me give you guys um, a minute. And uh, let's finish up. It says last call right now. It's last call for. Uh, so I know what we can do. We'll go to Q and A, and then we'll come back to give me five. So last call for lists. Get them. Get them out there. And then Roseanne, I leave it up to you to choose one and communicate that to me somehow. I'm going to leave my my messenger app open. My phone keeps locking me out. All right. So let's go to Q&A. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, I can answer right now about anything that I'm doing. I can also show you the little gong uh, over there. It's just a little, what we call a, uh, a chow gong, um, which is the most popular kind. It's kind of like how the symphonic gongs, the symphonic gongs are designed, uh, but you can see it right there in the background. Uh, I can work my way over there and show it to you before we do the Gimme Five thing. So any questions? Oh, also coming up in a, in a few minutes, uh, we do have community calendar events. Um, and I've got, a, I've got a request for you guys uh, to help out some friends of mine who are amazing artists, musicians. Uh, and so that's also coming up too, and, it, and it's in time for the holidays. So that would relate to gift giving, which we're all excited about, right? So... Um, are you guys excited about the Gimme Five? I hope so. <laughs> okay, Lester has a question. What non-percussion instruments can you play? Uh, well, uh, I do play the Native American style flute. And I'm, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, it's not like my first instrument. But I've been playing it over 10 years, maybe 15. 
by now, and I enjoy it a lot. Uh, so that's one. I also play the ukulele um, pretty well. I'm fairly competent on the ukulele in terms of just accompanying. I'm not like a soloist, but I can play chords just fine and uh, play a lot of music on the ukulele. And uh, piano is a percussion instrument. I, I play keyboards a little, but let's see. As far as non-percussion instruments, I guess that would be it. Something you guys may not know is that I do play all the mallet instruments like marimba and vibes, you know, xylophone, that kind of stuff. So I can play that stuff too. That's all percussion, but sometimes we don't think of it as percussion in the same way that we do drums and percussion. Um, and... Uh, I think that's about it. I, I could sing okay. I can, you know, I can hold my own. Uh, I used to sing in choir in high school. I sang in the like show chorus, right? Which was, which is kind of what, I guess, uh, what would we call that now? That's what Glee is about, right? The show chorus or the, what do they call that now? I don't know. Um, it was like show, yeah, show tunes and stuff. And then also in the choir, which we did, you know, like Handel's Messiah and that kind of stuff. Um, so, and I enjoyed that very much. I'm a, like a baritone bass, so that's kind of fun. Hold down the bottom. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I've been known to to get a slide whistle once in a while, maybe a kazoo. I'm not sure if that counts. All right, you guys, um, I'm going to go back over to the gong, unless you have any more questions, but we have a gimme five. So the voting has ended. <laughs> All right, let me answer one more question before we go. And question from Cornelius, uh, how do you organize practicing multiple instruments? Well, that's a good question. Um, how do I organize? How do I organize anything is the question. Uh, you know, you, it, it's a matter of, of uh, first of all, just deciding when, right? When you're going to do it and then do it. So you can schedule it. Um, practicing is something that at this point in my life, all right, so let me, let me just answer it this way. I've practiced a lot, right? A lot of things for a lot of time. I would say at this point, I don't practice a lot like I used to. What I do is I sort of prepare myself, <laughs> which includes some practicing, but I, I basically, I work with the skills that I have at this point because I've developed a lot of skills already and I can pretty much parlay my skills into and onto different instruments, you know, pretty well. So I don't have to do a lot of intense practice unless it's an instrument that I'm not familiar with at all. Um, or, you know, it's something that requires a different skill set. The good news about percussion, though, is that a lot of the instruments, of course, are played in much the same way, right? We use that percussive stroke, you know, striking things, whether it's, and that that goes for string instruments like the, um, like dulcimers, you know, hammer dulcimers, uh, uh, tongue drums, tank drums, you know, any any of those things, including like all the way from loud instruments like timbales, to soft instruments, you know, all the way down to mi micro movements like playing uh, kalimba. So all of that's kind of related. And also the tracking of up and down a scale is also related. Everything's everything's sort of related in a way. And then on the hand drums, you know, bongos, uh, darbuka, or dumbek, you know, they're kind of related, sort of similar. Congas, djembe, ashiko, you know, any, and, and cajon are all sort of in the same basket. So. I know that I'm not answering your question directly, but I'm just saying, you know, that's something that I rely on, uh, which is leveraging my existing um, skill set. Um, so I would say just, you know, you could schedule it, plan it, put a certain amount of time on each instrument. One thing that helps me is actually the looping uh, because it pushes me to combine different instruments. And then I have to make sure I'm up to speed and I can play all the different instruments that I want to put into, you know, a loop, for example, like a live looping thing. So, um, but in terms of organizing, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not somebody who actually plans, you know, practice that much in terms of ahead of time. But uh, I guess I, I practice what I need to practice in order to play the music that I want to play. So a lot of my practice has been driven by having a gig to do or having an event, you know, having something coming up 
uh, like a performance that I need to, you know, incorporate those instruments. And then of course that gives me the motivation to, to put in the time and do it. So if you don't have something coming up, just pretend like you do or make a commitment. And you know, one thing that I'm going to leave you with this one thing that worked really well for me when I was, um, first writing, actually writing books, but this can apply to anything practicing is I teamed up with a friend of mine and we would hold each other accountable. We, we met up once a week and we would tell each other what our goal was for the next week. Like, okay, by the end of by our next meeting, I think we would, we'd play golf on Mondays or something. And then we'd go out to dinner and we'd talk about what we did and what we're going to do. And the rule was, if you didn't do what you said you were going to do by the next week, you had to pay for dinner. All right. And because each of us were super cheap, we always did. <laughs> we always met our goal. But if you could set up something like that, even when you're where you're just like with a with a partner, with a friend, and you're both holding each other accountable for reaching your goal. And I would say once a week is great. And just check in, have a reasonable goal for the week. And then you've got you know, you have to produce that result because you got somebody that's going to ask you, okay, did you do it? What did you do? And if you want to set up a thing like where, you know, money is involved or, or food or something like that, um, you could do that. So that would be one way to motivate yourself. Um, so Rebecca was just asking, how long were your practice sessions when learning? I mean, that really varies. Sometimes it's all day. I mean, it's, it's just a lot of time. I mean, hours and hours and hours. It just depends, you know, what, what you're doing. But I, I would say for those of you who are not familiar with what musicians actually do to, to get competent and to reach a professional level. It's, it's literally thousands of hours of, of practicing. I'm not sure most people realize that. I think a lot of people think that musicians are just people that are sort of talented, right? They're just, Oh, you're talented. Um, talent really has very little to do with it. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of practice, a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's a, it's tenacity, it's stubbornness, it's curiosity it's perseverance, it's problem solving, it's a lot of work. And you just grind and grind and do it and do what you have to do. And it's research, it's taking lessons from other teachers, it's, you know, uh, getting together and playing, it's for having gigs coming up and having to meet, you know, a, a certain level of competency for gigs. It's all of that stuff. So, um, but, you know, professional musicians uh, have practiced a lot many years in most cases. And uh, you don't have to start young. I started playing drums when I was about 13, 14. And I hadn't really done much of anything before that, um, except for play trombone and saxophone in fourth grade for a little while. But, um, you know, it's not about starting super young. It's about how much time and effort you put in and how you're focused and, you know, how much you're willing to work and just doing it. Um, I always tell people, the people that, the people that are, have success in the music business are not necessarily, you know, the most talented or gifted musicians. They're just the people who never gave up. That's it. They're the ones that are left <laughs> after other people quit. So, uh, and I'm not hating on anybody who walks away from a career in music because it is hard. It's, you're freelancing. There's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of good question marks that hang over your head. It's not, you know, it's not, it's not the kind of thing that you, you're going to keep doing, let's say, if you have a, have a, uh, have children, maybe, you know, probably not because you have responsibilities, you know, to other people at that point. But, um, but I, I do mean that it's just a matter of like, you just keep going and you keep going and you just stay at it and stay at it and stay at it and don't be a jerk, you know, of course, but let's take that as a given. But I'm just saying from a, from your, from the perspective of working and playing and having gigs and doing the work, it's just, you just keep going, just keep doing it. And you'll find a place and you, everybody kind of settles into, you know, at the tier <laughs> where, wherever they're at. Uh, and I've been lucky to have top tier jobs and, you know, everything down to the bottom. <laughs> of gigs. I do it all. I do the full spectrum. I don't just do the best gigs. I'm an equal opportunity musician. I do all the gigs. All right. Um, okay, you guys, let's go. Let's go do the give me five thing. All right. So Lester Luna is the person of the week. Congratulations, Lester. We're going to, oh, you're going to make me work, huh? So Jimbe Agogo, 
triangle, Kashishi and Maraca. All right. So we got a couple shaker things. We've got two medals and a djembe. All right, good. Let me take my phone over there so because I'll forget by the time I walk back to the other station. All right, I'm going to go and it'll take a second to get this going. Also, Lester, uh, give me a tempo range, slow, medium, or fast. Okay, we're back over here. I'm, uh, I'm going to work on, and then, uh, um, uh, Roseanne, just put that in the, in the messenger thing because, oh, there you are. Put that in the messenger thing because now I'm over here and I can't see my computer screen very well from here. Medium. Okay. I got it. This is fun, you guys. All right. So what do I need to do? Let's get the instruments together. Let's get rid of some stuff that we're not using. So we're using maraca, right? Kashishi, agogo, triangle. See, I did remember. So we don't need all of these. Put those over there. We're gonna have these. We're gonna have triangle. And that gets a triangle beater. Always make sure, you guys, when you're gonna play something, make sure you put the, the right uh, implements out like I need the wooden stick and I need the the triangle beater sometimes you know you'd be surprised on gigs like you, you put something somewhere and then you're like you go turn to play something and it's like where's the triangle beater where's the stick where's my you know make sure that's why we have stick bags and stick tables you have a stick area so you just like stick stick to it stick your sticks in a sticky spot okay so I'm gonna move this up a little and then Let's grab the djembe. This, by the way, ooh, is a very heavy instrument. This instrument um, is from, where is this from? I think this is a drum skulls djembe, actually. Uh, it is West African carved djembe, and it's got a calf skin on it, which I have to say, I'm a little nervous about my hands right now. It's kind of cold in here. But the head's not super tight, but this is a, a pretty nice drum. But it's got a, this has a, actually calf skin. Ooh, oh my God, it's heavy. <laughs> oh man. Let's make sure the ball is in the picture. All right. It's loud. All right, I'm gonna try to manage the volumes here. So what I'm gonna do, and let me just uh, give you another educational piece. Uh, what I try to do when I do live looping is I try to play the most kind of consistent stuff first. Um, and then I go to, you know, things that have more complex rhythms and more space in them and more syncopation. So in this case, and I don't know what I'm going to play exactly, but, you know, shaker, maraca, kashishi, that kind of thing. Um, it'll probably at least start off pretty steady and then I can go to the djembe and play after that. So I'll try to lay down some things that are kind of repetitive and steady. That gives me my foundation and then I can go play uh, other things. So I don't wanna completely blast the microphone out here, but let me um, also, I have a mic down here on the floor that picks up the bass. So maybe that'll work. I'm gonna get my head, head <clears throat> my headphones on. So medium tempo to me means around uh, where we were, which is let's see. Let's go back. Okay, I don't know why I can't see the tempo right now. Um, Hmm. Okay. I think it's around 100, 100 BPM. I like that. So let's turn this down. I'm going to turn the volume down. I, I probably, what I usually do is do a little sound check. It's still pretty loud. And let's add a little reverb. A lot of these instruments are, are on the loud side, so um, 
I can turn down the mic and then if I need to, I can play the softer instruments up there. All right, let's see what we can do. Turn up the loops. These are four bar loops, just FYI. And uh, let's, let's start putting some together. Nope, not yet, hold on. I think I just messed it up, hold on. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't have the click on, but uh, let me check something. Yeah, oh, that got changed. This looper is finicky. I don't know why it, uh, if you start and stop it, it'll just change the loop length to that, whatever you just did. So it changed the loop length to a, to a half note instead of four bars. Which honestly, in this case, could be okay. I'm just playing a, a kashishi. All right. All right, let's go.
I hope that was, <laughs> I hope that was enjoyable. You know, the tempo jumped up a little bit because of what I did at the beginning. So it was like medium fast, right? But that's okay. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, one of the things that, uh, man, I need to practice gym bay. <laughs> Thanks for uh, thanks for reminding me how much I need to practice djembe. Um, but yeah, nice uh, nice choice, Lester. Nice instrument choice. Um, if you guys, so let me play this gong really quick before we run out of time. This is a media, a small small chow gong, but um, it has a really nice sound. <coughs> Excuse me. I just wanted to show you this because a lot of a lot of the gong activity these days is is geared around these massive gongs, you know, the big gongs, 26 inches and up. This one is about, I want to say 12, maybe 14, 12, 14. I don't know how many centimeters that is. Don't ask me. 25, 30, I don't know. Um, but it has a nice sound, and you can you can get a lot of different sounds out of these. Turn this down a little. It says 11. <laughs> it says it's 11 and three quarters right on the top. I guess I marked it at, at some point. All right, so that's, that's that gong, 12 inch gong, let's call it. Uh, pretty fun. All right, I'm gonna go over to the desk and uh, it's time for community calendar. Don't go away, we're almost done. I'll be right there, hang on. All right, um, now I'll make, try to make sure my, my mic stays on this time. All right, are you guys digging the uh, the Gimme Five thing? I think I think that's pretty fun. It's it's challenging for me, and uh, you know, hopefully fun. I mean, this is live, you guys. This is a lot of pressure. <laughs> but uh, but oh, thanks, Roseanne. 30, 30 to thirty five centimeters. Thank you, my Canadian friend. Uh, all right, let's go to community calendar. We've got a few things coming up for you guys that you, to check out. Uh, right up uh, again, uh, Sule Greg Wilson, who I need to have on here. Um, Sule is a, a really amazing musician, teacher, uh, and uh, he's doing a Kwanzaa event December 11th. So that's coming right up, SuleGregWilson.com. He also has a great book called The Drummer's Path. He wrote a long time ago. It's still relevant now. Pretty cool book. I recommend it. Uh, Sheep Scott, is that right? Sheep Scott Community Drum Circle live. And you can find out information on Facebook, December 10th. Also coming right up. Drum Strong 2022 Celebration of Light Drumming to Beat Cancer. This is a fundraiser. Charlotte, North Carolina, December 21st. Drumstrong.org. So you guys can check that out. And finally, here's something that I want to share with you guys because, and this is a live thing. We just, this just happened today. Um, but look, one of the reasons we're here is to support each other and we are a community. And my friends, Shelly Morningsong and Fabian Fontenelle are musicians there. They live on the Zuni Pueblo and they are very talented. Um, and I want to show you what they're doing. And I want to, I'll tell you in a second. Shelly plays flute. She sings. Uh, her partner, Fabian, her husband, plays drums and sings and chants. And what they do is incredible. Uh, if you're on Facebook, look her up. Shelly Morning Song. She's a friend of mine. And um, But I want to show you what they're doing right now because they have this Etsy shop. And I don't know if I can, can I zoom in on here? Elk Dance is what it's called. And they're also making, she's making this stuff. I think he does some of this too. And they um, are, I'm going to leave this up. And I think you guys can, can, you guys can tell where I'm headed with this, right? So 
she posted today, and she's a very honest person, beautiful person. They're both amazing people. And she posted about the struggle that they're having with doing work and getting gigs and, you know, doing, cause they make their living as musicians and dancers and singers and flute playing. And they're, they're a powerhouse team, but the fact is COVID has just shut down a lot of opportunities for people that do what they do. And so she said, well, I'm probably just going to try to do more with my bead work and leather work. Um, Fabian does a lot of the leather work. She does a lot of the bead work. And I saw that and I'm like, yeah, I can relate. I mean, you know, we lost, my wife lost all of her work in two weeks in the first part of COVID. I, of course, lost some work, uh, travel oriented things and crowd oriented things. And thankfully, because of your support, I'm, I'm able to keep working and keep earning and being productive. And, you know, I, can, I was able to go online. Not everyone's able to do that. So I want to, here's my mission, you guys. I want to see their shop empty. All right, that's all. I'm just saying, go there, buy some gifts for people. <laughs> I want to empty that shop out, all right? It's beautiful stuff. It's handmade. Just do what you can, um, all right? Because they're friends of mine. I want to help them out. And um, that's all. Elk Dance Etsy store. And then beyond that, if you want, go buy some of their music. They have amazing music. Uh, beautiful. You know, Native American. Um, they're in the Zuni, Pueblo Zuni. And they, what they're doing is awesome. So uh, let's join together and see what we can do to help out an amazing uh, couple of artists and people. And, and it's, that would be awesome. All right. So do what you can. And at the very least, go by and say hello. Maybe friend them on Facebook or something. Thanks, David, for super chat. You're the man. I, we really appreciate that. And you guys can follow David's lead, too. And... Uh, and donate something if you want. And the other question, and we're going to wrap up in a second, actually, but I want to show you what's coming up for our percussion hang, and uh, and then I'll come right back. Uh, coming up in a week-ish, um, well, a week from Sunday, Miranda Rondeau, amazing musician. You guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to be able to invite artists like Miranda into the percussion hangs that we do through our through the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Kalani. Um, you know, it's just incredible. So go check out Miranda's work if you have if you're not familiar with her. She's gonna join us Sunday, December 18th, 11 to 11:50 a.m. or or around that. And that's for patrons. So you do need to, you know, become a patron. You can do that over here. Uh, of course, patreon.com slash Kalani. It's up in the top also, uh, you know, of the of the window. So you, so you guys can do that. Um, if, you, uh, if you get anything, if you're not a patron already, that's okay. You can donate right now through Super Chat. But I would just uh, ask, you know, look, it takes a lot of work to do the shows and things. So I will ask you guys, again, if you're not a patron, please consider it. You know, think of it this way. Um, I publish probably 10 to 15 videos a month, um, plus four or five, you know, nearly one hour shows. And even if you just took the Tuesday Muse Day shows, are they worth a dollar? Are they worth a dollar to you? And if the answer is yes, then just join us at like five bucks a month and support the channel. Uh, it's not just the channel. It's like everything that's happening. So that's, that includes all of World Drum Club. The stuff I do at Kalani Music.com, which is our Kalani Music Channel, which is largely the Native American style flute things. Ukulele Club. There's also stuff over there. A lot of that has just been put out for your free consumption. And if so, if you consume some of that, just, you know, this is a reciprocal relationship. The idea is that you, uh, instead of, you know, making people pay for things, you just allow people to pay for things and, and you allow people to support by giving it away first. And then when people, um, you know, feel and if hopefully if and when they feel like they got something out of it, then they say, OK, great. Here's here's a little uh, something to help out. So we do appreciate that, especially during these times. And believe me, I know I know things are getting tight. I realize that. But there, you know, it takes a it takes a community. I just donated to Wikimedia today and Wikipedia, I guess, because I, I appreciate what happens over there. What you know, I appreciate that resource. So 
you know, get donate to the stuff that you um, that you like and that you use and that you appreciate. So it'll always be there when you want it to be there. All right, that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, I appreciate everybody showing up today. Uh, yeah, okay. We've got some agreement on the on the donations and things down there, but I, you know, whatever you guys can do, especially let's focus. Go focus on uh, Shelly and Fabian though right now, and uh, circle back around to Patreon. I just I love those guys, and I I want I want to help them out as much as possible. So I just thought I would blast that out to you, you know, my community, and also thank you, Roseanne, again, Roseanne Musser for for uh, helping out today. And we're gonna do more. We're I'll, we'll see you next Tuesday. Tell your friends. We'll do another Give Me Five. We'll, and re, I want to remind you guys, send in your, your playing videos. If you have something, if you have an instrument that you're excited about, you want to share. Uh, if you're playing, like Rich did a multi-track thing, you don't have to do that. It could just be a, a short video of you playing. It can be in landscape or portrait mode. It doesn't matter. And uh, if you're interested in that, just send us a Dropbox or like Google Drive link, or I'll give you guys a link if you want to upload it to one of my folders. It's really easy. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. And uh, happy holidays. We'll see you soon.